The Santa Barbara Project A top-secret rocket and missile program of the late President Ferdinand Marcos. This project is one of the results of the Philippine Self-Reliance Defense Program back in the 1970s, which aimed to provide the basic needs of the armed forces of the Philippines, using local technology and without the assistance of foreign countries, such as the long-term ally, the United States. The rocket was also part of the Philippine military experiment to produce its own ballistic missiles. As shown in the video, it is seen that the rocket was featured during the 1973 Independence Day Parade at the Luneta Grandstand in Manila. It was witnessed by former Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos, along with the top military officials at the time. Even though it was still in development and experimentation stage, that project was one of the achievements and proofs that the country has aspirations on becoming self-sufficient in terms of military technology. Back on March 12, 1972, the rocket named Bong Bong-1 was successfully launched at Caballo Island near Corregidor in Manila Bay and was successfully retrieved from the South China Sea. Several more tests were launched in the succeeding months, all at the Caballo Island, and all of the tests were described as successful. The rocket system was actually built upon an inventory of ex-US bombardment rockets and part of a US submarine. It was researched and jointly developed by a group of Filipino and German engineers, scientists, and the Philippine Navy. The missiles were also named after Bong Bong and Aimi, the children of former President Marcos. The Bong Bong 1 was first built and tested between 1972 and 1980, and said to have a range of 12 kilometers. During this time, China was still testing the DF-3, DF-4, and DF-5, which is able to carry nuclear warheads and China had more funds to support their project, making their technology development much faster. Project Santa Barbara also developed different types of missiles, such as ground-to-air missiles or surface-to-air missiles, air-to-ground and air-to-air -air missiles, which will serve as an interceptor against incoming land, air, and sea threats. There are also two versions of these rockets and missile systems. One of the rockets can be launched by a mobile truck-mounted launcher, and the other one is submerged launcher, which is likely to be for submarines, but we really don't know what it is for. Since December 1972, a series of 37 dynamic tests have been conducted on the 180mm rocket. If all the tests and developments are successful and approved for certification, the second plan of the government that time was to mass produce it and to be exported to other countries that have interests in the rocket and missile system. On September 7, 1975, Four rockets were launched 10 to 12 kilometers away into the sea from a vehicle-mounted launcher, somewhere in the coast of northern Luzon. It was witnessed by the President Marcos himself, along with the First Lady and his children. There is a rumor that during the tests, the President himself was almost hit by the rocket, and it was unsuccessful, although we didn't really know the truth, as the project itself is highly secretive and mysterious. The test might have been successful that day, and it might have not been. After the rocket test, President Marcos was interviewed by the state-owned Philippine news agency. He said that the defense of the Philippines cannot be left to our allies. We must assume that there will be contingencies where even the United States may not be able to come to our assistance. He added that there are other weapons and armaments that they are testing, and Project Santa Barbara was just one of the series. So there must be many other weapons in developments under the Self-Reliance Defense Program, but who knows what they are and where they are now, and what happened, why it was not seen until today in the public. At that time, the President is also reportedly concerned about its relations with the rest of Asia, when there were negotiations with the United States to install American military bases on Philippine soil. During those days, only the Philippines, Japan, and South Korea have the United States military bases in the whole of Asia. After the 1975 test, there was no more information about the Santa Barbara project, as the country was plagued with revolution and chaos. Former President Marcos was ousted from his position and was rescued by the United States Air Force Sikorsky S-61 helicopter, 
going to Clark Air Base. From there, he took a Lockheed C-141 Starlifter to Anderson Air Force Base in Guam, and then flew again to Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii. After Marcos was ousted, Project Santa Barbara was discontinued and left in the dustbins of history. There are some critics asking to ban and stop the project, as it was only intended for the development of nuclear weapons. That is why the project was scrapped, because the new 1987 constitution of former President Corazon Aquino forbids the use and keeping of nuclear weapons in the Philippines. Back to this day, KBL, which I actually don't know what they are, or they might be a political party in the Philippines, published that they have a leak from their military insider that a team from the Armed Forces of the Philippines Weapons and Tactics, Department of Science and Technology Weapons Engineering Specialists, and Rafael Advanced Defense Systems of Israel are working jointly to reopen and reactivate the late Santa Barbara project. We really don't know if this is true as this report has been years ago. In my own opinion, it's a noble and patriotic objective to revive the program, but it is simply a little bit impractical. The program itself is already almost five decades old and it might be better to start a new program in the future. It would also cost billions of dollars to develop such kind on our own and would take years to perfect an indigenous technology and then establishing a manufacturing base for it. As of now, the best option for the country is procuring weapons from other countries and include technology transfer in the deal. In that way, it would be a lot easier and more practical if the country wants to develop its own. The country also has a very limited budget as of this time, but maybe someday in the near future, this country will have another chance in developing its own military technology.